nice to see you all. Yeah, this is our home. And this 10 day trip seems so long to me for some reason. It seems like a, a three months time passed. Um, so um, what is kingdom? In a, like a kingdoms of heaven. What's this concept to you? And we were thinking about the power of God, you know, the glorious kingdom that is not of this earth. And Jesus was making it clear with this statement saying that when you cast out demon in my name, the kingdom of heaven is among thee. So basically, the most practical way of saying kingdom is when the powers of God is manifested through you. Right? Jesus did not say that when you love one another, you know, the kingdom of God is among you. Or when you have this good character of humilities and uh, patience and all this goodness. But it's saying that when you cast out demons in my name, and that is a supernatural act, there's something that is beyond your, your human ability. You cannot do it. There's no way you can cast out a demon. No way you can perform a miracles. No way you can have this prophetic uh, vision to tell the future. But when the supernatural is manifest through you, which is the power of the Holy Spirit manifestation, you know that it's a kingdom of heaven among us. It's like a touch of divine. You know that it's not natural. It's supernatural. You know how the Catholic, they embrace uh, uh, when, when, when the, uh, the, the statue of Mary, when there's bleeding, her eyes bleeding, you know, and sometimes she's crying. And it's a very simple thing. But people would gather us and people would be at odds as looking at it, beholding at the statue because the statue would not be able to bleed by itself. So it's like God is manifesting himself. So this miracle is very, very important. At least once in a while to remind us that God is real. Of course, without the miracles, we already believe that God is real. But that touch of divine makes you feel it. It's not just believing it, but actually living it. And the more intense the miracles is around you happening, the more you feel that kingdoms of power. And that's why Jesus was saying, that when you cast out demons in his name, when something is supernatural, beyond your, your human ability it happens, you know that is kingdom. So this is what we're going to talk about. It's the kingdom of heaven. And I'm asking you, are you living in that kind of life where the kingdom power is around you? You know how when Jesus come on earth, that is the beginning of his Jesus ministry, right? Jesus ministry, we talk about what is Jesus ministry. Jesus ministry is to preach the gospel, but also exercising in this supernatural, miraculous power that only God can perform. And we are the body of Christ. After Christ descended and entered into glory, the body of Christ is about to take over this mission to manifest and to live out this Jesus ministry. And sadly to say, churches are very, very, uh, hasn't been living up to the fullness of the Jesus ministry, right? As we preach the gospel, we do this, we do that, we sing, but we don't show the, uh, the miraculous size of it. And Christianity has been stripped down from the miraculous side for a long time. And so we're saying that it's not that it's inefficient, but it's not living into its fullness. But we know the will of God is for his church to live out to its fullness, not just manifest in, in, in preaching in the word and the gospel, but also in the powers and the miraculous power and the miracles power of the kingdom, casting out demons. Nowadays, church doesn't even cast out demons. If there's somebody totally demonically possessed, you'll be scared. Even like, the, like those uh, scary movies, you know? All those scary movies, they, they're showing how the, um, the, the dark side is ruling, right? The dark side is very powerful. And the good side is always weak, right? That's how all scary movies are. But in kingdom, every single Christian can cast out demons. And I'm asking you, have you ever cast out a demon? People will look at you like, what? No, no. 
Is, am I supposed to? You know, I think we are supposed to. And because if there's an enough power of kingdom, then sometimes there are hidden, possessive uh, uh, demonic power. They will have to be manifested. So this time when we went to Beijing, there was this lady. She had this cancer all over her tummy. So her big tummy is not because she is fat, but because it's all cancer. And to a point, it's end stage, and, it's, and the doctors say, you know, there's, there's nothing that can kill you, and she cannot feel her tummy. But her tummy is funny because there's the, a demon inside. It's, the, it's going to come up like aliens, you know, and it's moving. It's like a snake, you know. And then the friend that she's living with, and then she will say, in the name of Jesus. And then whenever you say in the name of Jesus, then that, that whatever is popping up, it will come, down, come back down. Right? But it will always, like, come up in time. And then... Uh, and then she came to one of our meetings, and in the beginning, we were talking about the Word of God, and then later on, she had questions, she was explaining herself, and I was answering her question, and I, there was two times I tell her, okay, that's enough, you don't have to give me all this detail, skip it. But she won't listen to me, she just had to finish her story. And I, the second time, I'm getting a little annoyed, and I say, you know, usually when I tell people to shut up, they will shut up, okay? So it's not for you to talk. I already let you talk for half an hour in this very precious time, wasting everybody's time, so if I tell you to stop, you will stop, right? But if I tell you to stop and you do not stop, you know how the, pri- the, uh, the, the Bible said that the spirit of the prophet will, will submit under the spirit. Actually, the spirit of God will submit under the spirit of God. You will submit under the order. Then I know immediately when she doesn't stop talking, she's demonic. And then once we acknowledge that, then she really becomes full-blown demonic. And I can't even see her white part on her eyes. is all black, you know, like how, how hard the movie is. But of course, later on, we take care of it in a very, very quiet way, and uh, uh, we're going to talk about that later. But first of all, let's get back into kingdom. Kingdom is when the miraculous power is manifesting through this weak vessel of us, a natural vessel that we cannot perform all these things. And it's really a shame. I would have to put this word, use this word, a shame for the church not to have miracles to show the world. Okay, We've got to have some kind of miracle to show the world. So during these 100 days, we have 87 uh, miracles, and we don't have time to go through it one by one, but it's really amazing. One of the miracles is basically uh, this uh, pastor, Korean pastor, that came to us, and his name is John. I want to spend a little little bit of time talking about John so that you don't miss his amazing, uh, amazing life. So in 1994... He was, he was already a pastor. He got a PhD in theology, but he feel that life is so dry. He feel like that got to be more than that. He feel like he doesn't feel God. He was very, very, you know, in his valley. So finally, he went to a meeting, and the pastor laid hands on him. When he laid hands on him, his eye lift is so heavy, he cannot open his eyes. And his body is like in a trend. He just falls down on the floor, and he, he, he hears this beautiful music, and he sees in his spirit, this beautiful light that surround him, okay? And he just couldn't get up. And even after the meeting finished, he still couldn't get up, so people uh, put some blanket on him and let him sleep through the night. In the morning, you know, he woke up, and he's very hungry. So he just grabbed the Bible in the church, and he was just reading. He forgot about eating. He didn't do much, but basically just eating and, and fasting and, and praying, you know? And then nighttime comes, the meeting happens again. He was sitting there, and the... And uh, once the pastor starts preaching, his eyelids becomes heavy again, and he can can open his eyes, and he falls down on the ground, and he's like in the train again. And of course, the same thing happened. They put a blanket on him, and he woke up in the morning, and then he fasted and prayed, and then, and then, uh, and I was telling him, how long does this last? He said, one year. One full year. Every time, I say, every time when the meeting comes, I really want to sit down and like a normal person to listen, but... (laughs) I just couldn't. I just fall down because the Holy Spirit hit him so hard. And I know in the charismatic realm, there's a lot of people that fall down. And I feel some of them may be fake or whatever, but John is real, okay? This is really the case how the Holy Spirit touched you. He said, I'm really trying my best, but I cannot open my eyes. And it's very heavy. And I was in that train. It's like the Holy Spirit is changing. Actually, basically, uh, the Holy Spirit is changing his spiritual DNA. Changing his being there. Until one year later, then the church is saying, we cannot accommodate people like you. You just sleep here every night, and you're not really, you know, 
doing anything and you don't talk like the, and you just every time meeting you doing the meeting you fall down and you kind of make a scene and everybody will be you know just, just we just cannot have you here anymore so he he's like going out but from that time on he is uh it's really amazing I, don't, I had to skip some time because today is not about John but anyway from then on he was telling me that the vision that he see is so clear he said, I was saying, like, to put point. He said, every time when I seen, it's just a little scene. He's just like, one time I went into the church and I listened to the pastor and I feel this pastor is really prideful. So I, I just took off without, you know, continuing on that service. With that mentality saying that, you know, you know this, this church is prideful. And the Lord comes to him that night, you know, with crowns on his head and his sad face with his pierced hand and say, John, Today, you think that pastor was prideful? Actually, you are prideful to think this way. You should go to, uh, to apologize to her. And then John was saying, hey, I didn't even say anything. I didn't say it to her. I just, think, I just think, thought about that in my heart, and I just walked out of the church. What's wrong with that? Why have I to apologize? And then Christ would just walk back, turn away, and walk back sadly. And then one minute later, Christ will come back in glorious, you know, shining like form, and his head is on fire, you know, just burning, you know, hot sense. And Christ said, John, I'm asking you again to apologize. And, and he was like slammed on the floor, and he said, yes, I will, I will apologize. And he said, every single time when I disobey him, in one minute time, he will come back in that very, very scary form to ask me to repent. So imagine. If every time you're going to sin, every time you're going to do something wrong, Christ will come to you and ask you in that way, will you learn to obey? Will you wait for the month, one minute later, the second appearance? Right? And I was saying, gee, actually, I was telling this to Mandy. Mandy was really, really all shook up and started to cry and say, see, these people, they see God. God appears to him all the time, every time when they make a mistake. And God never appears to me like that. Not even once. Oh, she didn't cry. She was just like speaking out in the, gee, you know, like how lucky is he like that, right? Basically, that's what she meant. It's like a lot of you haven't seen God once, right? How many of you have God appears to you? But it's in literal form. It's not like in a vision. It's like, like this literal form. So his vision is very, very sharp. So anyway, uh, He's going to start a church because very few church can accept him. So he's starting a church and he in his home. And then he, uh, actually not in his home, he, he, he did really start a church in San Francisco. And then he goes out to the homeless and he said, I preach to the homeless and I heal the sick, the crippled are walking, the blind are seeing. It literally like first century church. So this is John experience, right? So he, he heals a lot of people. And then, but those people would not come to church. And he said, I guess everybody just want the blessing of God, but nobody want to be at the cross and following Christ. So going to church is one thing, healing me the second thing. So, uh, so finally, there's this one guy. He is a person that washed the street. What do you call that? Uh, uh, street janitor? Street janitor? Uh, yeah, she's, he's, a, he's a very young guy. And he is an orthodox artist. Artist problem. He cannot speak. Artist. Yeah, artist. Artistic problem. Yeah. yeah I, always, I always mix the word with artist. Uh, so anyway, he, he came to the church and he's always listening. The first night, he lay, on, lay hand on him and prophesied him. And then he was Holy Spirit filled in. So he become a Christian. But the church doesn't have really other too many members. And then one time he lay hand on him. And the, and the Lord told him to prophesy. Say, uh, this guy, I forgot his name, but anyway, this guy, say, one of you is better than a thousand of you, right? So, actually, it's a thousand or hundreds of you, something like that. He's a prophecy on him. And then after that, a few days later, this guy comes to him and he say, John, I, I want to give an offering to God, uh, to God. And he pulled out this huge paper bag. And John was holding it and say. What is all this? He said, well, for many, many years, I've been saving $1 per day because I w I'm very poor, but I want to be able to have some money to do something. So I, I've been saving $1 a day. I, I try to live a very, very uh, a simple life. But 
ever since that I was born again in here for the last few weeks, I want to offer to God, God more. So I'm trying to save $5 a day. That means I have to skip lunch because that's my lunch, $5. But then for the last few weeks, I'm very, very hungry because during lunchtime, everybody was eating lunch. I'm saving the $5. So I will be hiding in the bathroom, embracing myself, you know, because I don't have a lunch to eat because his job is very strenuous, you know. So he'd been saving $5, so he gave him this bag. And when John went back home and opened up this bag and count, it's $2,800, all in $1 bill. Every year is 365 days. You know, that is a few years of saving. But on the last of it, there's a stack of $5 bill, and that's a few weeks that he saved up. And that is so touching. When John was, uh, was telling us this kind of testimony, he would say, isn't that a beautiful testimony. I mean, it's not like a supernatural thing, but you know how people, when people are touched by God, they do this miraculous thing. It's like a, a, a virtue that you can't even find in the natural realm, right? Saving for a few years, one dollar bill. All these years, you're going to offer it all up in one time, right? It's not even talking about 10%. That's all he got. And then so, from that day on, that's the, this is the miracle part. The Holy Spirit is moving on that guy, and that guy is bringing hundreds and hundreds of people into his church. And that is a revival of his church. And he was telling that this guy go back home and tell, brother, you have to go to this see this pastor. And then this brother is not of God, and he say, why was I a pastor? I don't want to be a Christian. But the, the pastor, the, the, the brother, feel like there's the power, like holding him. You just cannot resist. So the brother went to the church that night with this guy. And then John was like, I was preaching. And afterward, the guy was on the floor, kneeling, crying. He said, I want to become a Christian. And when he made his testimony, he said, I don't even know what happened. It seems like there's a force dragging me into this meeting. And when I listened to the sermon, something just grabbed my heart and I know I want Christ. It's just like immediate change of that. And his brother is only one among the hundreds of examples in his church. So a lot of people getting saved, a lot of people going to his church. So finally, like after a while, the people start going out, not staying in this church. Uh, I'm thinking that I don't know, maybe if he's watching this, maybe he's, uh, you know, sometimes people have a very good uh, uh, gospel spirit to preach, but they don't have this, uh, this, this kind of gift in, in uh, nurturing, you know. So anyway, anyway, God lead his people one by one. So later on, he doesn't have too many people in this church. And then this, that's the time that God is telling him to come to Oakland. And it's very amazing about him. He said, uh, whenever I hear something from God, I always want to get some confirmation. Like God said, go to Oakland. He said, go to Oakland, for what? Then he was circling around Lake Mary for a while, okay, until he got to our church. So he was circling around Lake Mary. He said, but I'm very sure God told me to come to Oakland. And because he said, I will, every time I will ask, like, uh, three to seven confirmation. And sometimes he was saying, I'm in the, in the school of prophet in San Francisco, doing the time of searching of confirmation. He was like, I'm just in the waiting for the cafeteria. And then there will be somebody coming out, a lady coming out from the cafeteria, running out. John, I have an, a, a word for you. And he said, what? Go to Oakland. You know, it will be things like that. And then a, a, a kid will come up to him and give him a piece of paper and say, go to Oakland. You know, so he will see. So the lady was a, the seventh sign, the seventh sign that's saying God tell him to go to Oakland. So I'm for sure God wants me to come to Oakland. So he came to Oakland and of course he see our sign and he see that word spirit, you know. That's the, the word that attracted him to come over here. And he started becoming, and then at the end he's totally, he's working with us now. At the end of the conversation, he said, I am all ready. I'm all ready. This vessel is ready. So whenever you need me you know, for any mission, I'm ready to go wherever you want to go in. I'm with you. So actually, John, he cannot come to our Sunday church because he has the pastor at San Francisco church. That's why God is going to rise up some other pastor, you know. So eventually, if he really had to work with us in some mission, then our pastor or another pastor, the preacher, would go there and preach in this church. So, and on uh, February 17th, uh, his, his wife passed away, and he was really, really down. 
because his wife was very, very good, stand by him thick and thin all these years. And so uh, he was asking God, no, Lord, I'm pretty poor and I don't have any money, uh, even though, you know, I don't have a very big church now and I don't have much money. And he's praying that, and immediately God moves somebody that he, he just somebody that he knows, but he's not very close, and that person is passing away. So when he passed away, he signed his entire house to John, you know, and it's in San Francisco, a very nice district. He, he told him, my mom, no, whoa, that is a very nice district. So when he, right now he got a house, big house over there, and he was saying that, yeah, but it, but it was still a problem because even though I have a free house, but my, uh, my, my property tax is 2800 something per month. And you know how expensive that house is. I said, I can't even afford the property tax. And then the Lord told me, you know, just rent out one of the house in the back. And he's trying to rent out the house. He's looking at the prices. It's 4500 per house, per room, per month for that kind of district. And then the person that comes in uh, doesn't have that much money, so I give him, give him in about 2000 something, so just to cover my tax, my property tax. And that's a good deed that he did. But you can see, just to rent out, can you rent out your, your back room? for 4,500 per month. We don't even have that kind of house, right? So for those of you who strive really hard and work really hard and uh, you know, try to climb up the corporate ladder and save yourself a house, you know, and sometimes you even skip church because you have overtime, uh, I think that is not the proper path. <laughs> it's just a joke. Because God can give you a few million dollar house just like this. That is kingdom power. That is kingdom of heaven. This miraculous power is, is not just that, okay? It's, it's, he, he shared with me for like an hour and something. It's so, I was totally stunned by, by the way he talked about it. He said, I have to tell you some of these things because so you have, you have to understand of me. And this is me. So he said, I'm all ready. And you know, with all this little bit of money he has, you know what kind of ministry he's running? He's opened up orphanage. He said he just finished opening up one in Nepal, Nepal, all over the world, in Africa, in, in Dubai, in all kinds of places. He is the one that opened up the, all this orphanage. And I'm so glad that one day we, I mean, since he's working with me, that our church have this kind of line of ministry. And I say, where do you get all this money? He said, I don't know, God just gave me money everywhere. You know, this is like, you know, like this kind of thing, you don't have to worry about but money. If it's time for you to do the ministry, and if it's God's power to do it, you don't have to worry about finance. And that's something that we will experience very shortly from this China church. So this is miraculous power. This is called kingdom power. If you are a Christian, normal Christian, they don't ex experience these kind of things. They just, ex they just go to church and they strive. But when you're striving without the anointing, without the supernatural power, what should you do? You should continue to strive, patiently, and do all diligently with what you have. Because a time will come when God will see that, whoa, oh, okay, this vessel is ready. I'm going to run my you know, supernatural power through it. Now, sometimes when you lead songs, sometimes when you preach, sometimes when you do gospel things, it feels so hard, right? But you just have to wing it through. You just have to suck it in. No matter what kind of problem, you just have to suck it in. And at the same time, you know, just keep a, keep a, a humble heart and a very, very pure heart to just strive. Okay? I know some of you are not to that point. But some of us is already lucky. We are in kingdom time now. We're in kingdom spirit. So when we do things, it's so darn easy. When you cast out demons, it's supposed to be a piece of cake. When you perform miracles, it's really a piece of cake because the Holy Spirit is upon you trying to manifest His supernatural power because that's kingdom time. It's like computer, right? Real time, right? Is there such a term? Maybe that, huh? It's called real time or something. It's like computer time, right? And then kingdom time. Christian, a lot of kingdom, a lot of Christians are not in kingdom time, so they just function as normal Christian. But this is the time of kingdom. God is outpouring this kingdom, kingdom spirit. And I was, we were in uh, Beijing, and everything was so miraculous. Every day is a miracle. 
But I just want to tell you, one of the prophets that we want, so it's, a, it's a lady, so it's a prophetess. And one of the prophetess that we, I want to wheel this person into our church. And she's supposed to come over here for the ordination, but she cannot make it. But anyway, she is one of us for sure. She is already one of us, just like John. She is one of us. He is the kind of uh, uh, miraculous people that with supernatural power basically for the church. But Chen uh, Joy Gok, this prophet Chen, basically she is a prophet of, a prophetess of, a, it's a little different dimension. It's a little, she, she is very good in, in gospel, but her prophecy is 100% accurate, which I have never seen in my life. I've never seen somebody have 100% accuracy. And it's so phenomenal. I'm just going to give you some example that uh, she would be preaching gospel to the person. And the person would say, I will not believe in your Jesus. I'm a Buddhist. Right? And then she say, really? She say, do you know that your, your Buddhist at home has already fallen down to the ground? And so the guy did not believe. They call home. And then the, 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 the servant at home said, yeah, for some reason, your Buddhist has fallen down to the ground and fallen into odd pieces. And then this guy on the phone is like, what? Is he was saying that your God is a real God. They forget about the Buddhists. I want to become a Christian. You know, it's, it's like this kind of gospel power is so phenomenal. And because she has only a third grade education level, but because her prediction to China is so darn phenomenal, the China government gave her an office in a very prestigious college in a Dongbat, okay, Dongbat College. And in that, in that, they give her a title called religious uh, professor. Isn't that cool? You know how good you have to be before the government will give you this kind of office if you have a third grade education, right? So her, her, every year she's predicting a lot of things about China and everything, 100% accuracy. That's why it's very hard to have her come over here just to visit us because they have all this kind of, I, I try to, we try to two times. And this, they just won't let her go because they're afraid that she'll come over here and just won't go back. Now I know why they, they won't let her go. Okay. But anyway, she said she wants to go to uh, Israel and learn, uh, uh, learn some Hebrews, right? So they, they, start, they let her in. And she doesn't have that much money. But she goes there and says, well, whenever I, whenever I take taxi, I don't, I don't have to pay. I said, why? Because I can tell the guy everything. So she would go into the taxi, and the Lord would tell me that the person is going to pick you up. His name is Gabriel. So he goes into the taxi, and he says, hi, Gabriel. And I said, how oh, you know my name? He said, well, I not only know your name. I know your daughter. You have two daughters, and one daughter needs help, and the other person this and that, and your home needs this and that. And after all these things, will you charge somebody, tells you everything about your home, and starts charging? So the guy said, OK, I'm on no charge. It's free. So she always gets her new taxi because because she knows so much, right? And this is the kind of like a powerful thing. And there are people from New England. They, they will fly over to her because there's this rich guy and his friend was telling he's about to go bankrupt. And this rich guy is saying, you know, if you have any sickness, nobody can help, help you, but the Jesus of Chan Jaiko can help you. Or if you have this bankruptcy that you are facing, no one can help you, but the, the Jesus of Chan Jaiko can help you. So this guy is very rich. So he's about to go bankrupt, and he flew over to see Chen Zhengguo in China. And see Chen Zhengguo, Chen Zhengguo doesn't know any economic, uh, academic, uh, economic thing. So she's like, well, just, just be with me, eat with me, chow with me. You know? So he's living with her for three days, and she said, now you can go back home now. And he said, just like that? You didn't give me any counsel. He said, well, the Lord sets you free. So this guy went back, and he didn't go bankrupt, and he's making lots of money. His prosperity, you know, the spirit of prosperity. Now, this is the kind of miracle which we call kingdom of heaven. It's like you cannot deny, it's undeniably, you know God is there. Don't you want to live that kind of life? Some of us is in it, and we want all of you to be in it. Because I'm telling you, when a church is living in that dimension, and that is kingdom come. That is kingdom. And that's what the church is supposed to be. That's how first century church is. You know, it's not because they're super. It's not because they're more educated than us. Actually, we, we have so much theology nowadays. Well, I think I have more, more theology surpassing pa Apostle Paul. But it's not about knowledge. It's not about ability. It's about the kingdom powers moving. 
And in China, we see a lot of miracles. This China chip, we have a lot of miracles. But it's not even time to count about miracles. I want to tell you guys some of the things. It's like how we capture this kind of anointing. So when we, when we see Chan Zhou Gok, right? And I was telling them too. I said, why do you bless, pass on everything that you got to these two best students? So Chan Zhou Gok did lay hand on these two, lucky them, and really pass out her entire anointing. The entire anointing of Chan Zhou Gok is among these two persons now. And then I'm asking them, so how do you get this thing working? He said, very simple. How, you, how can you get your prophecy 100%? Is very simple. Just every day, morning and night, you just make this prayer. Pray for four things. Number one, you pray for God to give you a heart of wisdom. Number two, you pray for God to give you a, an, an, an athletical mind. An athletic an analytical mind to, to really, you know, it's a difference between heart of wisdom. It's, it's a mind that can really, you know, like, like Jack, you know, Jack have that kind of mind. Very logical to, to, to see things very clearly. And number three, you ask God for an eyesight that is very sharp. And number four, you ask God for a discerning spirit. So all of you who has not much supernatural power, just start praying. Just go there in the morning, pray in the morning, or pray in the night, you know, and just ask God for these four things. Just focus on these four things. And it's all about focusing. He said, when you pray, it's that power of focusing. It's getting sharp and sharp. And you can, you can understand this four thing is talking about how sharp thing is, how sharp and accurate the mind is. And you don't want to ask God a lot of things. Just ask for these four things every day, you know. And one, one day, and it's time's up, boom, your prophecy power will be just like her. I believe it. And then and she was saying, when you pray, when you pray, the important thing is about thorough. You don't want to just make a prayer, you know. You want to pray until it's thorough, thorough. You know, you feel that you have the grips on it. Okay, that's the time, that's the way to pray. So that's all kind of lesson, but um, the method is simple, but the result is phenomenal. And I'm going to bring her in over here to the United States. We will try to bring her in. I'm going to have Augusta try to work on that paper. Because she said that lately, after after she saw us, and she know that she's in our team, she said that I want to come over to the United States because God has told me something big, like catastrophe is gonna catastrophe is gonna happen in the United States. Whether it's in the stock market or whatever, she said I I I will be better if I'm in that place to pray for that because that she always pray for China is very accurate, but I think we're gonna bring her in once a year, so we will know what. We're going to happen in the United States every year. And her prophecy is very accurate. And I think that with this kind of accuracy, we can bring it up to the government level and let the government know that there are true prophets in Oakland. So we will know when the earthquake hits, where, you know, all this stuff. So actually, this prophecy power is very, very important. Accuracy power is very important, especially if you use it into the game. Right? If you can predict the warrior winning, it's no big deal because it's like, okay, of course they win, right? But if you can predict the war is going to win the first game, then they're going to lose two games, and then they're going to win the next three games. If you can do that, that art is very, very hard. You, you'll be famous overnight, I mean, over that game period, right? If you make the prediction before and it happens just like that, people will come back to you. So prophetic powers, uh, this miraculous power is really worth a lot of money. I'm not saying that we want to use, want to earn money with it, but kingdom also needs money too, right? So it is not a bad thing. It's not even a wrong thing to see how God right now is trying to rise up his church and they're going to, he's going to financially support the church, like John, like what, because he has so much miracle power around him. So why you be so darn poor, right? So I'm not the kind of prosperity people that always preach about prosperity. And we went through a lot of hard time. But what I'm saying is, when you have the kingdom powers upon you, you should not worry about your finance. Whatever God wants you to do, you should be financially sufficient. Because that's kingdom power. Actually, it's power everywhere. Okay? It's just that, it just depends how, who you're going to touch, what God wants you to do. So, should we really, really strive harder? Because now, it is the day of the Lord. The Lord has been pouring His miraculous power upon us. And uh, this, this 
coming Friday. Yuleki will be here. I hope you guys can join us. It's Friday, 7 o'clock at night, and uh, Saturday, 1 o'clock. And the most important one is Sunday's combined service at 10 o'clock. So can you guys make it? If you can make it Sunday, it will be great. Because that's also after the sermon, the service we're going to have. A, he's going to preach on these three things. He's going to preach on the, the Old Testament prophet and the New Testament prophet and the kingdom prophet. Yeah, that's a pretty good title. I was going to preach on that today, but I will leave it to be lucky. <laughs> I do have this urge to preach on this myself and see from a different point of view, right? And uh, about Bill Lackey, I just want to give you guys one, uh, one thing, because this guy is very, very powerful. As I was, pr- I was fasting, I was praying to God, uh, who should we f- find a prof- uh, prophet to pass on this anointing to us? And the Lord said he is not under any greatest prophets in this world. Not just world now, but in the history. He is not under any so he is, I mean, this is the compliment that God gives him. So he's going to be here. And I just want to tell you guys, uh, on a, uh, 2005, during the Katrina, uh, Katrina, uh, to, uh, Katrina storm that hits Florida, and their school is in Florida, Christian International. I went there. It was a really nice school. And it's so beautiful. They have all the, the prophets and all the teachers, the, uh, the faculties, all living in one street. That street is very nice. They have nice houses. And it isn't that nice. If one day we can run the ministry and we can all live together like a street, right? So anyway, during the Katrina hitting, and they, they know it's coming. They said, no problem. This, 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 uh, this state here has seen a lot. So I know it's got judgment coming down. So they were leading, leading the teachers standing in front and leading all the students standing on the middle of the street while the, the, the hurricane is coming, right? looking at the hurricane. When they see the hurricane coming in front, then Bill Lackey and Bill Hammond were standing in the front and prophesizing to it. No, they're speaking in tongue and prophesizing to the hurricane. And the hurricane would come and it spread out. The hurricane spread out. And hit. So their district, their whole entire street in the area is all spear. So you know how Katrina is really, really messed up? You go there, right? The whole place is kind of messed up. You look at their street. Their school, all the faculty, all their homes and street is, was untouched. Till today. They never have to spend a cent for the insurance to rebuild. And that is a prophetic power. This is, prof- this is kingdom power. It's not just about prophesizing something. It's to make things happen. To make, you know, listen to, like, you know, like movie of the storm and something. You know, you can really direct the storm. You can calm the sea. And that is a few years ago. Every year, the prophetic power is rising up. Just like us. We're not the same. And every trip, we get stronger. Every day, everything we pass, you get stronger because your faith grows stronger. Because you see all this thing, it will be amazing that your faith does not grow. And some people have never seen this thing, so their faith is, is never there. It doesn't know is it real or not. But let me tell you something. We have 83 miracles that happened during these 100 days. Even the miracle does not happen to you directly. If you see it, the person next to you, that should be enough to build up your faith. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit is according to your faith. You know, the bigger the faith, give you bigger gifts. So... Uh, it is a good time. It is kingdom time, and I want you guys to really try to put away your, your old bags and, no, no bags, go pay long. Say. Oh, put another old wine skin, and put on a new wine skin, because the new wine is coming, and it's going to be powerful. Yeah. Then see was nothing in my wine skin. Okay, so are you guys ready? Actually, all this sermon and uh, all this prepping you know, the, the way we're talking about is basically prepping you so your, your wine skin is like a new mindset, new mindset. We don't have a mindset that we don't believe, we, that we don't believe in miracles or believe in supernatural gifting. You know, one of the gifting is miracle performer, right? So we believe it. We believe it in full. With this new wine skin, we know and see what we happen around us, all this miracle, we believe. This is exactly what God is doing and is doing all around the world. You know, right now in the, Dutch, uh, in the in Middle East country, there are Christians being slaughtered and tortured every single day. Right now, this persecution, right now, 
this persecution is greater than any period in the entire history of humanity. It's more greater than the first century church being persecuted, Jerusalem. This is exactly, I mean, I didn't hear, I mean, I hear from the news. It's very, very serious. We're sitting pretty here, you know. Why? Because God is going to rise up his church to perform his Jesus ministry. The kingdom is very near. You know, the America really just turned, uh, turned into a, the gay marriage is past. You know, a lot of things happen. You know, the world is really shifting and changing. China is rising up and rising up big time. You know, there's a, there's a, 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 a company in China, they send 5,000 of the employee overseas to Europe for a trip, for a vacation, and they spend, I think, three, three billion dollar euro, three billion dollar euro just for a vacation trip. And the, the European, they were really kind of at odds, like, gee, I like to work for that company, you know? You know what, how, how rich this, this thing is? This is only one company in China. The China people, some of them are so darn rich. And the people are rich. People are smart. And people are hunger for education. People are hunger for, for, for Christian. There's a lot of people that are changing. So the world is changing. And his church cannot remain the same. Because as the need and the, and the need is, 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 is rising all over the world, of course, the powers of the Holy Spirit will find His people to empower them to perform the ministry as the need. And the more power you have, the more responsibility you will have, and the more fun you will have. It's really an exciting rise when the Holy Spirit is, is carrying you because that's the whole thing about miracles. And some people say, oh, don't, don't, don't really uh, overemphasize these miracle things. You know how miracle will pass, right? Evidently, somebody just lecture wings. A miracle will pass. The gifts will pass. A supernatural thing will pass. But the character of Christ in you will not pass. So as a church, as a Christian, we should emphasize on good character, you know, virtue, and not emphasize on this supernatural thing. Is it sounds right? It sounds kind of right, but it's not right. So we battled that guy. I said, well, let's put it this way. No matter how much virtue you have, it's personal. We don't emphasize on gifts, okay? Supernatural gift or whatever. We don't, we don't try to uplift this gift stuff because that is kind of foolish because gift is basically from God. But you cannot undermine the miracles because miracles is divine. It's a divine act of God. It's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Comparing the miracles and your virtue and your personal virtue, your personal virtue is nothing. Zero. It's insignificant. So don't tell me this kind of reversing thing like all this miracle is going to pass away, is not important, but the virtue is more. You try to uplift or try to emphasize your, uh, your, your, your supernatural Christ virtue to that point, you're totally off balance, brother and sister. I know this virtue is it's important. If you don't have life, everything else means nothing to you, to you only. But if you don't have the miracles power, you really cannot function in the new eras of time because this new era demands the ministry of Christ, the body of Christ to function in the full spectrum of his Holy Spirit gifts. So I want this church to be ready because it's here. We're not talking about something that is about to happen. We are already in it. And miracles is around us already. Every day I want to see more. Every day I want to grow deeper. I want to see the powers of God. You know, and I, want, I know His power is unlimited. So can we have this kind of new mindset? And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are just humble vessels. We are basically useless if you don't use us. If your power doesn't empower us, we cannot do much for you. No matter how hard we try, we are so limited. But when the powers of God manifest in us, throughout, in out, then we can do something great. Lord, we praise you because this is your time. It's the day of the Lord and you are pouring out your miracle, miraculous power everywhere and you're pulling, pulling, bringing in the big guns and you're going to rise up this church, not in just natural power, but also in supernatural power to manifest your glory 
And as you have entered into glory, you are also going to ascend your church into glory. We give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray.